Hello and welcome to another video of problem solving using data structures and algorithms. In this video, I'm talking about recursion uh, and we look at some interview problems using recursion. Uh, for those of you looking at a detailed uh, sort of introduction to the basics of recursion, I've provided a link in the description box below that has uh, the basics of recursion uh, included in, in the lecture itself. Here we are focusing on the problem. So let me review a function when it calls itself is known as a recursive function. And in general, recursion is the process of defining a problem into sub problems, obviously, and also the solution to the problem in terms of a simpler version of itself. So essentially, it is a process of defining the problem and finding the solution. Uh, we break down the problem into small, smaller versions of itself and then put them together. So that's what recursion is. Let's jump to some interview problems. The first one, this is a quite common interview problem. Given an integer, create a function that returns the sum of all the individual digits in that integer. For example, if I'm giving the number n equals 6781, return the sum of the digits. Okay, so let me first of all look at a smaller version of the problem. What if n was simply, let's say, 53, a two-digit number? Now, if I divide this 53 by 10, I'm going to get a remainder and a quotient, which is the answer, right? So in this case, if I'm doing like an integer division here, I'm going to get the remainder as three and quotient at five. So I have some basic idea of how to split the digits. Now what happens if I have a three digit number? Uh, for example, if I had, instead of 53, I had five, three, one. And if I divide it by 10, right? I'm going to get a remainder and a quotient. Let me label it remainder and quotient. Now the remainder here is going to be one, the last digit, and quotient is going to be 53. Now if I go in like divide this 53 again by 10, I'm going to get a remainder and a quotient again, right? So the remainder here is going to be um, three and the quotient is going to be five. So essentially we have uh, sort of illustrated a way of getting the digits separated. And then all we need to do is introduce a plus sign in between them somehow so that we can add them up. And that's what the solution is asking us to do. So like putting this into a pseudocode, let's say I have a function that takes input parameter as n, right? So the first thing is I have to count the number of digits. And if I arrive at this like last uh, sorry, the last remainder, which is like one digit only, if that is left, then all I have to do is just return it, right? So the first thing is to go and check if the length of n, and, and yeah, be careful here because I'm by length, I don't mean um, the length of some string. Here I mean the number of digits, right? So if that is equal to one, then just go ahead and return the number, right? And with the rest of the steps, that means in else, I have to arrive at that number. So how am I going to do that? As we said, we are going to do this division by 10 for every number. So essentially, I'm going to call my function again. Sorry, the name of the function is function only. And keep calling it by dividing it by 10 because that's what we des decided. And we'll do an integer division in Python because we're using Python. Uh, because we want the, the remainder to be separated from the quotient, right? And then retain the remainder as well. So keep the remainder because every time, and this is the modulus sign in Python, right? For the remainder. So retain the remainder because that's what we are doing, right? Have the remainder and like take the quotient divided by 10 as long as we don't get the quotient as a single digit number. Okay, so let's go to spider and implement this. Let's keep all this that we wrote here and define a function. I'm calling it uh, some rec and let's say take some n as an input, right? And if now the, here comes the, the tricky part um, and this is like one way of doing it in Python. I'm trying to find the number of digits. So what I'll do is I'll convert my integer to a string for the time being. And if the length of that equals one, then just go ahead and return n because I've arrived at that point wherein I'm down to a single digit, right? And if not, right, if I have a bigger sort of a number, what I have to do is, remember, retain the remainder. So this is how I retain the remainder and add it to the overall sum. And here is the recursive part. I have to keep calling 
the number uh, with the quotient as an input, right? So the quotient as an input uh, will be this. Okay, uh, well, uh, looks good to me. This is the base case, this is a recursive case, and each recursive case is taking us closer to the base case. So all those conditions are met. So we can just simply go ahead and test our function, which is sum reg, and let's say, let me test it for a smaller number so that we know it works fine. Okay, and then what about 411? So it should give us 11. So it works okay, right? So this was problem number one. Okay, so moving on to problem number two, the problem states that write a recursive function that reverses a string. All Python users will be uh, tempted to use the slicing and indexing operation that you might be using in a lot of your programs. But here, uh, we should first of all avoid using this for any interview because the interviewer is obviously not testing the, the indexing and slicing and shortcuts of Python, but rather like your um, understanding to, towards the problem. And then the problem itself states that you have to write a recursive function that reverses a string. So let's think about the recursive approach to this problem. Let's say the string is uh, this, right? And I need to get uh, this. So this is how we can reverse it, right? One solution that comes to my mind is that how come, how about I just separate uh, the O and put it somewhere, right? And then I separate the L and put it somewhere and keep doing that, like getting the, the last digit somehow, right? But if you think about it, we are uh, like, we are actually reading the first letter last, right? So this is what's happening in this approach. First letter is coming last, right? So there is nothing great about it, but if you remember the... Python call stack mechanism, what it does in the recursive call to a function is that it creates a stack of values, right? So let's let's visualize that. So what will happen is if I have the string hello, right? And if I get rid of the last element and take all the, the, the rest of the elements, right? I'll get... Um, or, or no, I think I'm, I said it wrong. Uh, how about I do this, right? Because we're thinking of the stack mechanism. So it is like first in, last out, right? Or last in, first out. So here, uh, what I can do is, uh, how about I get rid of the first element and come down to ELLO, right? Again, I get rid of the uh, first element and I'm down to LLO. Again, get rid of the first element, LO and then O. Now, based on the stack mechanism, the way the stack will uh, unfold is that this was the, the last element out. And so then when we, we uh, uh, kind of make the recursive calls, the recursive calls will be in this order, right? So the first element that will be out is O and then L and then L again and then E and H. So if for every string we make a recursive call to the first element, now think about it. Uh, keep removing the, like the first element, right? So keep removing the first element. Uh, basically make recursive calls without the first element in every subsequent call, right? So without the first element. And then next, keep track of the first element, right? So keep track of the first element. That gives us the solution, right? Because when when Python stack is going to uh, get me the output, it's essentially going to be O L L E H, and that is what I need here. Okay, so let's go and implement that. Let's keep this and let's implement that in Python here. So I'm going to write another function here, right below this, and I'm calling it reverse, and it obviously reverses a string. Uh, let's go here. Uh, first of all, the base case. So if the length and that's, that's what we're trying to do. If the length of S is, let's say, less than equal to one, then just return that S, right? So eventually when we come down to that O, just return it, right? So return my S. In the rest of the cases, uh, simply return, remember, we said keep a track of the, the first element, right? For every string and keep calling the function with the rest of the elements, right? So that's what I'm doing, reverse. Keep calling uh, the string with the, the rest of the elements, which is starting from the first. So leave the, the zeroth element, starting from the first up to the end, right? So reverse that, keep calling that. 
and then concatenate, keep, keep concatenating the first element because that's what we decided. Sorry, zero and that's it. Okay, let me check if this works fine. Let's test it, right? So print and reverse and here, hello, let's test it. So we get in, in, uh, like the, the reverse of that string. How, how about hello world? Well, we get that and the space is where it should be. So that's how this works. Okay, so that was problem number two. And then finally moving on to problem number three, which is slightly harder than the other two. And this is asking us to write a recursive function called string print that prints all possible arrangements of letters in a given string. So this is a permutation problem and there are many different versions of this. A good approach would be to go and ask the interviewer for what exactly they're looking for, uh, which version they're looking for. So here I'm taking a more generic approach towards finding the permutation of a given string. So what does that mean? Let's say I'm given a string cat and essentially I have to return a list of the permutation of all of these, for example, cat, um, ATC, ACT, and so on, like whatever the different combinations of these are possible. So the, the solution approach is, um, the, the, the approach that I'm thinking is, what if I fix my C? So I fix one letter, which is my first letter, right? So let me fix C at position one, right? Then I can get two more combinations of A and T, AT and TA. So in this line, I'll get CAT and CTA. Next, what if I fix A at the first position, right? So then I can get two different combinations of the other two letters, which is C and T, T and C. So essentially here I'm getting ACT, TAC. So similarly for T, I can fix T at the first position and get like different combinations. Now, if I had a bigger string, right, I can still go on fixing each letter at the first position and, and uh, keep getting the different combinations of the rest of the letters. And then all those strings together will be the combination that I'm looking at. Now, what I have to do is, I just have to just pick one letter and separate the others, first of all. So I'm just like picking the first one and separate the others and then go and combine this one letter with the other uh, sort of uh, combination. So as long as the length is not one, just keep picking one letter separated from the others, then get all combinations of other letters and concatenate with this one letter, and then change this one letter. So for, for example, get C and A and T and so on. If it's a bigger string, then, then keep getting like the rest of the elements and then keep getting uh, the permutation of these. Also, when we are getting the permutations of the rest of the elements, we are here also interested in uh, breaking this down. So for example, I'll fix A and then what all combinations can I get, right? And then I'll fix T and then what all combinations I get. So internally, this process is happening for every substring. So that's my recursive call. So I got what my recursive call is. And my base case is obviously, uh, as long as the length of my string is one, right? Keep doing this, keep repeating this. So essentially keep um, going over, first of all, go over the entire string. So maybe a loop over a string. And then for every letter in the string, create the rest of uh, the uh, uh, permutations, right? Until you get that one single letter. Okay, so having said that, let's go and implement it. So let's keep this and let me create a new file. And let's let's say it's string print. And as I said, there could be other variations of this problem. I'm creating a list of, of the values of all the combinations, right? So this is a string print s. The list is an empty list. So let me create an empty list wherein I'll get all the combinations. If the length of my s, which is string, is exactly one, this is my base case, right? then simply put that single letter because that's the only combination that's possible. Now, in my else block, I will have a for loop because I have to go and iterate over my entire uh, S, right? So that's what I'm doing here for I in range length of S. Okay, right? The other loop inside for J in uh, string 
print is my recursive call. Because remember we said that we're going to fix one letter and then we have to go inside the rest of the letters and keep doing that until we arrive at that single final letter, right? So for J in string print, and then how do I call it is important. How do I call my, my function? So here I'm going to create some sort of a indexing a string using I. So start from like the first element up to I. So obviously the first one is going to be zero and go until I plus one. So essentially like I'm going to pick up one element. So in the first iteration, it's going to be, for example, C. In the second iteration, it's going to be E. Third iteration is going to be T. So this is that step, right? So I'm saying I plus one until the end, right? So then I is going to change. So obviously this call is going to change. And then what do you have to do once you're done with that? So basically just go ahead and um, do a plus equals to my empty list, which is S of I plus J. Why? Because J is going to get this uh, recursive call to my, and, and what, what I can do is like to really understand and whenever you're stuck with recursion problems, just use a print statement somewhere here so that you are able to visualize what's happening essentially, right? So let me put a print of out here. So this is just an optional step. We don't need it for the solution, but that's fine, right? So out plus equals this i of j. And what do we need in return finally? What we need to return from the function is just the out list. Okay, so all of that is fine. Let's go and uh, call the, uh, let me string print. And let's look at a very simple one because that is going to be easier for us to visualize what's happening here. Okay, so here we get the final combination and this is what happened and this is what we said. In fact, if I do a cat here, that would actually show us what we said in our solution approach that we are going to separate like AT and TA. So that's one combination. The other one is CT and TC and C A and A C. Now what all we have to do is combine with that one letter that we separated. And eventually we are going to get all the combinations for this particular string. Okay, so these were the recursion problem, recursion interview problems. That's it for this video. See you in the other video. Thank you.